In our previous tutorial, we introduced the capacitor, a temporary energy storage device. The measure of its capacitance to store a charge is what we shall refer to as capacitance, and that's what we shall discuss in this tutorial, along with other factors affecting capacitance of a capacitor. It's Kisembo Academy, and thanks for tuning in. Now, the capacitor, as you know, it has the capacity to store energy in the form of an electric charge, thereby producing a potential difference across its plates. So you, you can think of a capacitor as more like um, a small rechargeable battery. By applying a voltage to a capacitor and measuring the charge on the plates, the ratio of the charge, which we shall call Q, to the voltage, or what we will call the potential difference, will give you the capacitance value of the capacitor and is therefore given as a capacitance is going to be equal to Q which is the charge on the plates, on either plates of the capacitor, divide that by the potential difference across the plates of the capacitor. The property of a capacitor to store a charge on its plates in form of an electrostatic field is called the capacitance of a capacitor. Now, although sometimes we may say that these charges or the energy of that is stored by the capacitor is stored on the plates of the capacitor, but it would be it is more realistic it is more truthful to say that actually the energy is stored within the field between the plates of the capacitor that's where the actual energy is stored so by definition we can say that capacitance is defined as being the ratio of the magnitude of the charge on either plates of a capacitor to the potential difference or the pd across the capacitor or you can say that capacitance is the electrical property of a capacitor and is the measure of the capacitor's ability to store an electrical charge on its two plates. And uh, looking at this, we know that capacitance is going to be Q. Q is measured in coulombs. The SI unit for voltage is volts. The SI unit for capacitance is farads. And we know that one farad is going is one coulomb per volt so in other words if you are to define what exactly a farad is uh, you would say that a farad or one farad is the capacitance of a capacitor when charged with one coulomb with the potential difference across its plates being one volt so we get to look at the factors that are affecting capacitance of a capacitor we have basically three factors that affect the capacitance of a capacitor. We'll discuss them one by one. We have the first one being the distance of separation between the plates. We have the area of overlap and then the permittivity of the dielectric. If we're looking at, we shall use this illustration. We have a source of PD here. We have two plates. We have, we'll call this plate P and plate Q. This plate is connected to a gold leaf electroscope. And we are going to use the gold leaf electroscope to tell us the charge. It will be a measure to tell us whether the capacitance of on the, the charge on this plate is increasing or decreasing. If the charge on this plate increases by show of divergence of this uh, gold leaf electroscope, it would mean that the capacitance has also increased and vice versa. This D shows the distance of separation between the two plates. So we shall begin with... Uh, the distance of separation between the two plates. How does that affect the capacitance of a capacitor? Now we set up our diagram here and what we have this plate P and plate Q with the distance of separation D in between them. So what happens is that when we try to bring the plates together, it means we are reducing the value of D. So when we reduce the value of D, or when the plates are brought together, it mean it it means that uh, the, the uh, experimentally, the gold leaf electroscope, the leaves of the gold leaf electroscope will diverge, meaning that there is more charge that has, is accumulating on this plate as a result of bringing the plates together. So what does this mean? It means that when the value of D is decreasing or when you bring the plates together, it means that the capacitance of this capacitor is increasing. Likewise, if you take those plates apart and you try to pull them across apart, this 
gold leaf will draw the divergence of this gold leaf will draw which is a sign that when you increase the distance of separation between the plates the capacitance of the capacitor will drop so it brings us to the conclusion that the capacitance of a parallel cap plate capacitor is inversely proportional to the distance between the plate or the separation of the plates so that is one factor that affects the capacitance of the capacitor and that is the relation we get out of it we'll get to look at the other factor the area of overlap this is a piece of paper and this is another piece of paper of different color so it means that the area of overlap this demonstration serves to illustrate what i mean by area of overlap Looking at your screen are two papers that are overlapping each other. In this case, we assume that these two papers are two plates of the capacitor P and Q. When they overlap each other, the area of overlap is what you see as the region that is darker in the middle of the two overlapping papers. So when the darker region increases in area, it means that the area of overlap has increased and vice versa. So relating this to the capacitor plates P and Q, if you move the two plates relative to each other, the area of overlap will vary. An increase in area of overlap will cause the gold foil in the gold leaf electroscope to increase, which means an increase in capacitance. And a decrease in the area of overlap will mean a decrease in the divergence of the gold foil and therefore a decrease in the capacitance of the capacitor. This simply means to us, this simply brings us to the conclusion that the capacitance of a parallel plate capacitor is directly proportional to the area of overlap. If we introduce a dielectric in between the plates of the capacitor, it's going to increase the capacitance of that capacitor. And if we do not increase, if we do not introduce a dielectric in between the plates, it's simply going to mean that the, the, the capacitance of the plate will be less. Let's examine the effect of a dielectric on the capacitance of a capacitor or a parallel plate capacitor. Now, when we put a dielectric between a parallel plate capacitor into the gaps of a parallel plate capacitor, how does this dielectric affect the capacitance? Now, here we are having a capacitor with two plates. This is a negatively charged plate and this is a positively charged plate. There is no dielectric in between the plates. So it means that in between the plates there is a field and this field is acting in that direction and we have called that field EO, E subscript O. That's the field between the plates. Now we are going to introduce a dielectric in between these two plates. Now when we introduce a dielectric or an insulator in between the plates, what happens? Initially, uh, this dielectric has got its molecules inside it that are random. But then when we introduce these molecules into this field, E0, these molecules are going to be polarized. So when they are polarized, you'll find that near the surface of the dielectric, the surface that is next to the positive plate, we shall have uh, molecules that are polarized in such a way that we are having a negative, negative terminal. Negative electrons will be attracted at this end. Likewise, on the port, on the on the negative plate, near the surface, we'll have positive charges on the surface of the dielectric. So what does this mean? It means that we are having now two fields. The first, the, we have a field that is due to the plates, and then now we are having a field that is being brought about by the polarization of the dielectric. But the field that is being brought about by the polarization of the dielectric is acting in the opposite direction to the field due to the plates. How? We all know that the field moves from positive to negative. This is the positive plate, that's the negative plate. And so the field due to the plate is going to move from this direction in that direction. And we are calling that field E0. But then when we introduce the dielectric into the, into the, in between the plates, and we, we find that this positive induces a negative charge, negative charges on the surface of this, of this dielectric as a result of polarization of the molecules inside the dielectric. Likewise, this negative is going to induce a positive charge on the surface 
of the dielectric so it means that you're having a dielectric that is polarized with a negative on the surface this way and the positive on the surface that way so what does that mean it means that there's going to be a field that is created inside in between the plates which we are calling ep but this field is acting in the opposite direction to this one the field due to the plates because this ep it's from positive to negative so the field acts in that direction so what does that mean it means that we are having two fields we are having a field acting in that direction we are having another field in the same space that is acting in the opposite direction so it means at the end of the day we are going to get a resultant field uh, as a result of these two so the resultant field we get after this field cancels out with that one is going to be less than the actual field that is supposed to be here so how this does this affect the capacitance of this capacitor that's what we seek to explore we see that the field due to the plates E0 minus the field due to the due to the polarization of the molecules which we are calling EP is going to give us an effective and a resultant field ER of course this effective field ER will be less much less so after getting that effective field ER which is much less from the equation for intensity of the parallel plate capacitor E is going to be V over D uh, getting the voltage here making V the subject of the formula we know that the voltage is going to be equal to E times D now since E is going to reduce since the effective, redu the, the, the effective field or the effective intensity is going to reduce it means that the value of V will reduce I mean if you look at this expression v, the voltage between the plates is going to be equal to the intensity E times D and we are having the intensity reducing because of this so when the intensity reduces it means that the amount of voltage between the plates is also going to reduce so when V also reduces how does that affect the capacitance we know that capacitance is the charge per unit potential difference across the plates like we have seen here capacitance C is going to be the charge per unit PD now if this value of V has reduced it means that it's going to increase the value of C so since V reduces capacitance will automatically increase and so that is how the capacitance is affected by the dielectric so meaning that if you introduce the dielectric in between the plates of a parallel plate capacitor it's going to increase the capacitance and that brings us to that conclusion that the capacitance of a capacitor C will increase with the existence of a dielectric so the three factors will bring us to this relation that capacitance of a parallel plate capacitor is inversely proportional to the distance between the two plates but it will be directly proportional to the area of overlap between the plates and it will also be directly proportional to the permittivity of the dielectric that has been introduced in between and that brings us to that relationship which has been these are the three factors that affect the capacitance of a parallel plate capacitor the directly constant the area and the plate separation in our next video in our next story we shall look more into the capacitance of a parallel plate capacitor and uh, with a specific interest on how we arrive at this expression arithmetically thank you for watching this video i encourage you to subscribe to this channel if you would like to watch more of these tutorials otherwise for the benefit of those your colleagues out there who would like to watch this tutorial simply share this video otherwise thanks for watching and hope to catch you in the next tutorial for kisembo academy this is arnold ranga kuramia